April 24, 2005, was an unusually warm spring day on Sullivan's Island. Although the weather was windy and thin sparse clouds filled the sky, the creeks and byways protected by the islands appeared calm and inviting. The side of the island facing the Atlantic had strong gusts of wind and very choppy waters, but the boys weren't concerned because their plans were to stay in the protected waters. Josh and Troy were longtime fishing buddies. At 17, Josh is like a big brother to Troy, who is two years younger. They spend much of their free time together, and this morning, Troy convinced Josh to take the boat out for the first time so they could catch sharks. Dressed in light clothing, they headed to the garage where Josh had been painting his boat. It was an old sunfish sailboat with no sails or motor, but they would use paddles since they were staying close to shore. Packing their fishing tackle and little else, they drove to the boat launch and put in, leaving behind their cell phones, water, and food. The Sunfish is a small, stable boat, well suited for sailing in a protected cove or lake, but is too short and wide to be paddled efficiently. Had the boys checked the weather before they set out, they would have known that the Coast Guard had issued an advisory to boaters for strong rip currents at the exact location they had put in. Within minutes of paddling away from the beach, Josh recognized they were in trouble. He told Troy they were drifting and had to make their way back to shore quickly. Troy was having fun and thought it was like a game as they bounced on the waves and the water splashed over the sides. But it wasn't long after turning their boat towards land that he realized how serious the situation had become. They paddled until exhausted but were swept out to sea, miles from land in only minutes. As it grew dark, Josh's parents became concerned. His father, Neil, called the Coast Guard to report the boys missing. Not knowing where they put in, they would be unable to search for them. Neil drove to all the locations the boys would normally use, but could not find Josh's pickup or any sign of the boys in the dark. A day later, the Coast Guard located the truck on Sullivan's Island, obscured by trees where Neil had searched the night before. The boys were facing weather extremes. During the day, they were under the relentless blazing sun as it burnt their skin and dried their mouths. In the beginning, they played in the water to cool off and pass the time until they saw the sharks in the water with them. At night, the temperatures dropped to the 50s and storms battered the little boat as they struggled to stay warm and not capsize. Using computer modeling and satellite tracking floats to track the wind and ocean currents, the rescuers devised a search plan. Nearly 1,000 square miles of inland rivers, creeks, and the Atlantic were searched for three days with boats and aircraft, but the boys had already traveled 30 miles beyond the search area. The search was suspended on the fourth day. Finding them alive after so long was unlikely, but the plight of these boys would continue for two more days. Boats would pass by just out of range of their pleas for help as they were unable to attract their attention. One evening, a container ship came so close, they were forced to paddle out of its path, nearly swamped by its wake. On the sixth day, they had become so exhausted that all they could do was lie in the boat, often slipping into unconsciousness, weary to the point that they nearly missed hearing the fishing boat coming their way, believing that it was an illusion when they saw it. The captain of the boat had spotted the little sunfish and went to investigate, most certainly saving their lives. They had traveled nearly 120 miles north of Charleston. Josh and Troy made a series of bad decisions that day. Checking the weather and local warnings may have changed their mind from the start. Telling their dad where they were going would have meant the search began that night. A few inexpensive items could have stopped their ill-fitted journey that day. A plastic whistle, a signal mirror, and a flashlight would take little room in a tackle box. A little preparation would have made a great difference in their story.